Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is installing Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP to create a Windows Server 2012 domain controller. So now we are finally getting in to actually doing stuff with our Windows Server 2012 uh, computer. So as I've talked about before, when you install Windows Server 2012 for the first time, you've installed that operating system, Basically, it's just there. It has no more real functionality than a Windows 8 computer does. These server services are not installed and turned on by default. You have to go in there and do that. So if you want to set up the DHCP server, you have to set that up. If you want to install and set up the DNS server, you have to install that and set it up. If you want to install Active Directory and run Active Directory, you actually have to install that and set it up. So today what we are going to be doing is installing those different server services onto our server so that we can go forward in this track. So all we are doing today is installing the services. We are not actually going in and configuring any of them because those are their own 30-minute classes unto themselves. So right now we have the Windows Server 2012 server sitting there and we are going to install Active Directory DNS and DHCP. Now remember all of these different server services do specific things. So remember Active Directory is our security security service is the is the service that allows us to create users and groups and organizational units and assign resources to those users and groups. So basically this is where we can create a user and very easily give them permission to use a printer on the network or very easily give them the ability to use a shared file or folder or to restrict their access. Active Directory is what it gives us the ability to say that call center employees aren't able to change the background at all on their computers, but, but geeks running around are able to do anything that they want on their computers. That is what Active Directory allows us to do. DNS is the domain name services server. This is what maps IP addresses to fully qualified domain names. So if you're trying to get to a computer named server, DNS is what will turn server into 192.168.1.3 uh, so that you, your computer can actually access it. Again with DNS you will see in the book you will see in the book where it says you don't have to use Microsoft Windows Server DNS services. I suppose you don't have to if you really want to deal with a lot of pain and a lot of frustration and a lot of anger. Uh, in general I would say always use Microsoft Windows DNS server services again unless you're a high-level geek like me and you really know what you're doing. For you new guys just use the built-in Microsoft DNS server and the same is true with DHCP. DHCP is what gives out the dynamic IP addresses. Um, so, so, so just use Microsoft's DHCP server. Uh, it will save you a, a lot of time uh, at the end of the day because if you don't, it'll just get stressful and nasty and it's all bad. So let's go over to the whiteboard for a second because I just want to explain a couple of things uh, before we actually go and start working on the computer. So we're at, at the whiteboard here um, and the basically what we are doing today by creating this Active Directory server is we are creating the domain. So whenever you see one of these little triangles, that is a domain. Now the domain, the thing that we need to create a domain is at least one DC or one domain controller. Now in order to create a domain controller, we have a Windows 2012 server and we install Active Directory on it. AD. We install Active Directory on that Windows 2012 server. Now in order for Active Directory to work, we also need DNS and just to make our lives easier, also DHCP. Now these are all different server services. It's very important to get that through your head. Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP are entirely separate server services and they can be on their own physical servers or virtual instances of servers if you have a big enough network. So it is possible to have, simply have Active Directory servers and DNS servers and DHCP servers. Well, 
If you're like a lot of the small business clients, or if you're like yourself, where you only have a certain number of computers in your lab, you may only have one laptop or two computers, it's not worth your, it, it's, it's not feasible to have Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP be on separate servers. So what you can do is you can install Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP all on the exact same server. Now, for most environments, this will be okay. If you're dealing with enterprise environments, if you're dealing with 10,000 users, or 100,000 users, you want Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP to be on multiple different servers. You don't want them on the same box. But for, the, for a small environment, if you're dealing with an office of 100 users, or even maybe 1,000 users, having all of these services be on one server or instance is is fine as, as long as the hardware is good enough. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP onto our server and that will give us a domain controller, a DC, and that is what gives us the start of our domain. So as I talked about before, in the other classes in infrastructure, you can have multiple domain controllers. You, you can have 50 domain controllers if you wanted, spread all, all around the world at different sites with all kinds of weird replication strategies. Uh, so you can have numerous domain controllers, but you only need one. So like the small office environments that I dealt with, if they had 50 users, they would just simply have one domain controller with Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP all on that one domain controller, um, and, and then they would be able to, to do whatever it is. So, uh, so make sure that you do understand this. They may be, these services may be on separate boxes, but if you're dealing with small environments or your lab environment, they can all be on the, the same computer. So let's go over back to the, back to the desk. So again, so, uh, so I have my, my Windows Server 2012 server here. It's a fresh install. And just so you guys understand, I've installed this within VirtualBox, which is a piece of virtualization software on my laptop. So this is a fresh install. The only weird little thing about it, like I say, is it was, it's in a virtual machine, but for all intents and purposes, when you are administering your server, it will act the same way. So let's go over and let's take a look at the server now. So we are sitting here, it's Windows Server 2012. Again, I'm using the trial version. The trial version is free, gives you all the functionality that you need. So what we're going to be doing now, the tool we are going to be using today is Server Manager. So we go down to the lower left hand corner and we click on that little toolbox thing and this takes us to Server Manager. So Server Manager basically gives us some of the tools that we need to administer the server. Now, when it first opens up, we'll see over on the left hand side, it says local server, all, all servers, and file and storage services. Now, as we install more services onto the server, we will get more options over here on the left hand side. The same is true over on the right hand, uh, upper corner under the tools menu. So since we have certain services installed on the server right now, we get a certain listing of tools. As we install more services on this server, we will get more tools. F basically, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going up to this, this manage um, toolbar here and doing add roles and features. But before I add a role and feature to this computer, I want to change the name of this server. So let's go over here to a local server. Now you will notice when you install Windows Server 2012, it does not give you the ability to, to say what the server's name should be. So unfortunately, you get really horrible, it automatically gives you really horrible computer names such as this, win-hbm68hl blah blah blah, right? Are you going to remember this name when you have to go administer your network, when you have to, to con connect to this server, are you going to remember this name? No, you're probably not. So the first thing that we want to do with this server is we want to change its name to something that we are going to remember. Now in order to do that, all we do is so we go to local server, then we just click the current computer name. That will open up the system properties window 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we will click the button called Change. From here, we can now change the computer name. So instead of win hyphen blah, 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 I don't like that. I can simply call this server. So you decide what name you want to make your server be called, and then you can rename it there. Once you have renamed it, what you're going to do is you're going to click OK. And it's going to go in and it's going to, uh, to change the name. Now in order to fully change a name, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to restart the computer. So we're going to close, close, and we are going to do a restart now. So this is going to go in and this is actually going to change the name of the server. This is very, very important. Again, when you start doing a higher level administration, when you're doing things like mapping drives, when, you, when you're trying to connect to this server, um, if you have a really long, horrible name, it's, it's just going to be a pain in the butt to use. So the first thing that I would say that you should do is change this, uh, this, uh, this uh, server name. Let's see, it's rebooting now. So whenever you're doing uh, anything with the server, you, you do have to keep in mind that you may have to reboot the server. So whenever you're changing services, whenever you're, you change the computer name, do those types of things, you may have to reboot the server. Why this becomes important as you start administering servers in the real world is because if any users are currently connected to the server when you have to reboot it, well, obviously, they will be kicked off the server when the system reboots. So this is something that you should just keep in mind uh, as a professional, as you go on with your professional career, is anytime you are uh, doing any kind of maintenance to the server, you may have to reboot the server. So always make sure the users know you may have to reboot the server and you know, so nobody hates you at the end of the day. Before you reboot the server in a real world environment, make sure to go out and actually talk to all the users and tell them in 10 minutes the server is going to be rebooted. So make sure you've saved any files that you, that you need to have saved. So now we can go over to local server and we can see that our computer name, our server name, is now called server. So we've changed the server name for this particular server. So from here, now to add the functionality, we're going to add Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. All we do is we go up and we click on this Manage button. Now the Manage button gives us the ability to add roles and features, so we'll click on that. And then we basically just walk through the process. So we click Next. We leave the default role-based or feature-based installation. Next. We leave it to this server. Next. And now it is going to ask us what we want installed. So what we are going to do is we are going to select Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP Server, and DNS Server. So we'll click Active Directory Domain Services. And then when we do that, it will ask you, it'll tell you all these other things have to be installed. So we just say, yep, add features. Then we go down and we select DHCP. Again, add features. We just say continue right now. Because we the, the warnings that we will get during this process, basically we will fix all of these problems in the future. Then we also select DNS. We add features. Again, it's going to give us a problem. We do continue. And now we are going to hit next. So Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP, and DNS. Then from here, we just leave it as it is and we click next. And then now we're going to click next, next, next. And then we're going to do install. So this process is going to install um, all of the services that we need for Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. Really, now all you do is you sit back and you wait for a little while. Um, 
Generally, this process takes about 25 minutes. So, so with me, with, 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 the, with the, the, the fancy tools of, of video editing, we're going to fast forward through this process. But when you do this, expect this whole process to take probably about 25 minutes to, to install the DNS, the DHCP, and the Active Directory services. So I'll come back in a second when this is all finished. Okay, now that the installation process has completed, Active Directory, DHCP, and DNS is now installed, it is telling you that you need to do a couple of things. So for today's class, all we are going to be doing now is we are going to promote this server to a domain controller. So this will, is what will actually make this server a domain controller. So once the installation process is done, just look and see what things it tells you that you have to do. For today, we'll just do this promote the server. So all we do is we click on that, and this takes us through the process for um, turning this into a domain controller. Now a lot of this is, again, you, you have to be thinking about what you're doing. You have to think about what you are trying to accomplish. And if you think about what you're trying to accomplish, all of these questions that we'll ask become pretty simple. So what it's asking right now is we want to add a domain controller to an existing domain. Well, the answer is no, because we don't have a domain yet. Do we want to add a new domain to an existing forest? Again, we don't have a domain yet, we don't have a forest, we don't have anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new forest. So although this may seem a little odd, you may be thinking, well, Eli, we're creating a domain. Well, the answer is add a new forest because that, that the other two answers basically are incorrect. Now it's going to be asking you what is the root domain name. So for me, I'm just going to say etcg.com. So if you have a domain name, you would put that here. So if you have billybo.com, bob.com, you would put that here. Whatever your company's domain name, it could be .com, .org, .net. The only thing with server 2012 is it does have to have a dot something or other in order to create this root domain name. You can't do just etcg. With the new system, you have to do etcg.com or .net or .biz, and then we're going to click Next. Now realize you don't actually have to own the domain name, so I don't actually own etcg.com. This is all internal to your internal network, so you can use whatever you want. You could use Microsoft.com. It wouldn't matter because right now it is all internal. Uh, and you're using this in the lab environment. When you're when you're on an actual real business environment, you want to use whatever their domain name is, um, be, because just because of email services and that kind of stuff. But right now in this lab environment, you could use any domain name you want. Now at this point, it is asking us the the functional level. Uh, for this server. Now, as I've talked about, uh, Active Directory has now been around for a long time in the Windows world, all the way back to Windows 2000. So there's Windows 2000, Windows 2003, Windows 2008, and now Windows 2012 server. Now, as with, with, with all computer stuff, when the next version comes out, uh, there are more features, there are more, there's more functionality. So, so Active Directory now does much more than Active Directory did way back with Windows 2000. But again, you're dealing with large corporations that may have what are called legacy pieces of equipment. What legacy means is these are old servers that have been around for 10 years doing something and they still use, let's say, Windows 2000 or Windows 2003. So they don't have the full functionality of Windows 2012 server. So if you have old servers on your network, you will have to select a different functional level depending on those servers. Now for us, since we are simply building uh, out a brand new network, we can say that the functional level is Windows Server 2012. But do realize if you're dealing with a real enterprise environment, if you're dealing with a real corporate environment and you have 2000 servers, 2003 servers, you would have to make sure and go through and make sure you use the right functional level here.
So as we can see, if I select this, I could say Windows Server 2003 or 2008 or 2008 R2. Again, we will leave this as 2012. Now down here, it is also going to ask you a couple other things and there are check boxes. We already, it's going to ask what the capabilities of this server are. So we installed DNS before, so DNS is checked off. Again, this is the first server on this, uh, this domain, so the global catalog, the GC, will be installed by default. And again, since this is the, the first server, we can't make it a read-only domain controller. That would just simply be kind of dumb. So all of these boxes um, have already been checked off as they should since this is the first server on the network. It is then going to ask you for a DSRM password. So, as always, create whatever password you want. It has to be one of those complicated passwords. An uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, uh, a number, and a special character. But just put that in, and then do next. Make sure you write that down somewhere. Again, this is going to give you warnings because we don't have things like the DNS server already set up. So just basically ignore those warnings for now. We will deal with those later in a different class. We click Next. Now it is going to ask us for the NetBIOS name. So again, NetBIOS was used way back when, uh, but if you have legacy equipment, if you have Windows equipment, um, sometimes it will need the NetBIOS domain name. So the NetBIOS domain name is the basically like a domain name from, from the old days. So here, it, I, the domain name is just ETCG. The one warning that I will give you for the NetBIOS domain names is they can't be over 15 characters long. So I could not do Eli the computer guy because that's over 15 characters. So whatever NetBIOS domain name you pick, just make sure it's, it's under 15 characters. And generally, what Windows will do is it will take whatever domain name you gave it originally and just take off the .com or .biz or, or .whatever you put there. And now we're going to do next. So now, again, as we've talked about before, Active Directory is a database. So it's going to be asking you where information for this database should be stored. Now, some people, and I really do hate this, feel that you should create multiple partitions on your server's hard drive and store different types of data different places on those partitions. So shared files and folders would go on, let's say, partition D, and things like the database would go on like partition E, so on and so forth. I think you should just create one really big partition and leave it at that. That's one of those preferences things. I've done it for a long time. I say stick with one partition and leave all of the database and log files and sysvol folder at what the default is. If you decide to put things on different partitions, this is where you would go in and select uh, where this information should be stored. But then all we do is click next. I would say leave that at default. Now it's going to ask you, do you really want to do all this? So, I mean, this is basically all the configurations you put in. It's just saying, do you really want to do this? And you, you do. So now all you're going to do is you're going to click next. And then this is going to take you through the process um, for, for, for doing everything. So basically everything from here is an automatic process. So again, through the, uh, through, through the powers of, of, of video editing, we're gonna like time warp to a couple minutes from now. But basically this will go through, um, it will do everything it needs to do, it will reboot, and, and then we'll come back. So for the server, actually, uh, before it, actually, it runs the, the script to install everything, it goes through and it checks to make sure all the prerequisites for installing everything are there. You will notice that it does give some warnings here. Um, again, as long as none of the warnings are, 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 are red stop signs, you will just go ahead and, and leave everything as it is. So, so some of these warnings that are giving, um, there are things that we'll have to deal with in the future, but we don't worry about them right now. So we just take those. We understand that there are some warnings, but all we're going to do right now is we're going to click on the install. And now it will go through and it will actually install all of this.
So now the server has rebooted, and so Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP have been installed. So if we look over on the left-hand side, we will see that we now have new options. Active Directory, Domain Services, DHCP, and DNS. Again, right now, we are not going to get into these, but just realize that these options are now available to us. As I talked about, we go to tools now, we will see that we now have new options under the tools men menu. So there's Active Directory Domains and Trusts, Active Directory Sites and Services, Active Directory Users and Computers, DHCP, DNS, and so on. If we go over to the local server, we will also see that under domain, it now says etcg.com. So it's now the computer name is server at etcg.com. Now you'll notice up in the, the, the right hand corner there is a little warning on the notifications area. If we click on that we will see that we need to complete the DHCP configuration but as I talked about before we will do that in another class. Just realize that this little flag area here is where you will be shown um, when you need to do things. So basically it will give you a little warning and then it will give you a link to the tool you need to fix whatever the problem is. So that's all we need to do to install Active Directory, DHCP, and DNS. Now that we've done that, um, in the future we can actually go and wait, wait, auto, there we go. Uh, in the future, now we can go forward and now we can configure DHCP and DNS. We can start adding users and computers to the network and we can start building out this domain. But it's important that you install these, this functionality first so that we can do everything later. Do you realize so when you have the domain, in order to create the domain, you need the Windows Server Trick? server 2012 server you need to install active directory you need to install dns and you really should it's a really good idea to do dhcp again even if you have a dns server or a dhcp server already for this microsoft windows environment it's it's really better to use windows for the dns and dhcp i did a class previously on how to create your own lab network and at this point you really need to put your 2012 server on a lab network. We're going to go forward, we're going to set up DNS, we're going to set up DHCP and if you try to set that up on a network that already has another DNS and DHCP server running, you are going to run into all kinds of problems. It's just going to be very, 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 very bad. So, this was the class installing Active Directory DNS and DHCP to create a Windows Server 2012 domain controller. We installed those services, we created the domain, we now have the domain controller, so now we can move forward and we can actually start adding functionality to this domain. As always, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.